Hey guys, just wanted to show you a demo of the wet on wet watercolor technique that we'll be using for our um, watercolor crystal project. So you guys will be having access to this watercolor set. There'll be one per table and you guys can share. As you can see, there's a lot more variety in color that you're able to use. There's a warm section, a cool, another cool area, and then neutrals. Um, you guys are able to use these. And then I'll have some of these watercolor um, paint pens that you're able to use as well. You are able to put water in this area here. And then um, when you're actually painting, you're able to use this brush tip and squeeze here and it'll let some water out on your paper. Let's go ahead and get started with the demo for the wet on wet technique. I'm gonna show you how to do that on this side of the paper first. And I'm going to zoom you in here. So I'm able to create this cool watercolor effect, which I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's finished. Looks like this, where all the colors are kind of wet and um, not wet, but like all merging together. Um, this is another really nice example right here. <coughs> Your surface area, which is the paper, has to be saturated with water first. So that's when you're going to dip your brush into the water container that you have at your table. And then you're going to carefully add water to the area. First, make sure that your paper or your um, water is clean. As you can tell, mine is not that clean. I just, this brush must have been dirty. <laughs> So you're just adding a little bit of water to the area that you're wanting to add paint to. Then making sure your brush is saturated with water. You're going into your watercolor set. I'm just gonna use this one for now. And then you're going to add the water or the watercolor to the water and let it kind of pool around. You can also go and grab more color more of that same color or a different color. And you can kind of have your brush move the color around. I grab a blue. This project should be pretty reminiscent of the watercolor geodes that we did in Art One together. I'm gonna grab this green. So it's kind of the same premise. We're kind of working with the water being on the surface of the paper and then letting the colors kind of move around together. So if you're using a water brush, like if you're able to use one at your table, I'm gonna use one, one of my personal ones, <clears throat> you're able to squeeze it just a little bit and then the water will come through the end and that'll give you more water to kind of play around with. You're also able to grab color from the palette and paint with it as well. So if you're comfortable with using that, you're more than welcome to. You also have an option of using salt just like the Geo project, and then placing it on the watercolor paper and the watercolor to have that effect. Hey guys, this is a continuation on the one on what effect. I wanted to show you um, what my current project looks, looks like, but I wanted to show you a live demo on how to create this effect on your crystals. So I drew this crystal here, and I'm going to show you guys how to have the wet on wet effect on your crystal. So your page will be having several different crystals of your own personal design, or you can copy them from the designs that we practiced together. You have to have, I believe it was, I'll just put the amount of crystals that you need somewhere on the screen, um, but they all should be kind of clustered together in like a bouquet fashion, if you can say that. Um, Anyway, let me show you how to go ahead and go about this wet on wet technique that I'm wanting you to practice on these crystals. So like I said before, you'll have to 
carefully paint water on the sections that you want to work on. Now, if this whole entire crystal was gonna be one color or one um, group of analogous colors, I would just go ham and paint the whole thing. But it's actually a lot easier to work in sections. You wanna make sure that your paper is saturated with water, but not like completely to the point where the paper starts to fall apart. So just enough water on your paper. Then you're gonna grab the brush that you're working with. I prefer to work with these green brushes. And I'm gonna start working with warm colors in this little area here. So one thing that I did want to mention is when you're using your bowls, your dog bowls, one side has the dirty water and then the other side has the clean water. Um, it would be a lot easier if you work this way because as you see, I'm going to go over here and grab some clean water on my brush, grab some of this really bright yellow, make sure my brush is saturated with the color. I'm going to come back over here and add it to this area because I like the way it looks in the center. Maybe a little bit down here. Then I clean it off on this side. And then I'm grabbing new color or more color and I need my brush to be saturated so I'm getting some of the clean water. So that's just a tip that I have for you. So the other tip that I would like for you to remember is if you're working on your project, which you will be working on your project in a few moments, let me zoom you out. I would like for you to jump around on your paper. What I mean by that is you're working in sections. So when I started this, I started with this crystal first. Um, I wasn't sure where I was going with it, honestly. I just really wanted to work with turquoise and pink and blues. And then once I felt like that was covered up well enough, I moved over here and I started working on this crystal. You have to make sure you're moving around because sometimes some of the water might go over into this crystal. This was what happened here. But it's okay because I want it to be a darker blue crystal so I'm okay with that being that color. But let's say that you have a crystal that's blue and, and like cool tones and warm tones next to each other. Once they start to merge together or there's water in here, they'll start to blend and you wanna try and avoid that. So you want to make sure you're jumping around, work on this crystal for a little bit, make sure you're controlling the water. That's really the key with watercolors, controlling your amount of water. And then you can jump over to the other side of your paper and start working on another crystal on the other side. Make sure you're controlling the water that's going around your crystal so it's not going into another crystal and then creating more problems. But let's say that that does happen. It's totally fixable. What you can do is you can grab a dry brush that has no water on it, and you can just place it along the edges of the other crystal and the dry brush will kind of pick up the, the watercolor and the water and it'll be like a sponge. And you can dry it off on some paper towels and then come back and start picking it up again. That's what started to happen here because I went a little ham and the water kept on coming over into this area, but then I just kind of controlled it, kept on sopping it up and then I ended up liking the color anyway. But, um, that's the way that you can fix it. And remember, it's good to be flexible. Um, this whole entire project is having you kind of explore watercolor, see what kind of combinations you can create. Um, but I'm wanting you to focus on using analogous colors, which with each crystal that you create. Later on, I'm gonna introduce you some metallic and some white paints to have this gleam effect. So it gives it more of a a crystal shiny effect. But that is all I have for you today and after this video make sure you get started.